A better class of radio station. All Flavors Radio. You're listening to the Draft Time Show on allflavorsradio.com. Yeah! All right. Albert Einstein once said, We cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. The sounds of the Isley Brothers summer breeze and like i said we're longing 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 for the summer to come i am wimbo 77 and i'm actually lily good evening everybody how are you all doing out there how are you doing today lily i am um <laughs> i'm here yes yeah you I'm made here. it you I made, made it. it yeah just in time <laughs> just in time and it's like we said that's what we say that's it you're, you're here and the show will definitely go on yes now it's the 4th of may already can you believe that 4th of may yes may already. the 4th be with you oh yes and i saw something like that doing research today it was yoda yeah and it, apparently it's something to do with star wars star day as well wars, yeah may the force be with you may oh, the fourth okay be with you today. so oh well wow. so there you go That's so i was wondering i didn't i didn't um <laughs> Okay, okay. Very, very funny. Although I missed the to joke, me. right? <laughs> <laughs> to me. Oh. So we have quite a bit to get through tonight. And talking on, it's the National Day today, is National Teachers Day. Yay. Now I thought that, I mean, there was a quite a few other ones, but because we are in that field of teaching, why not give all the teachers a high five, all the teachers working very hard out there yeah. to educate Kate, the little ones, the middle adolescent ones, and the big ones too, yeah. right? So we it, we never stop learning anyway, do we? No, learning should always be a continuous thing. It should, should never stop. Absolutely. So it's National Teacher Appreciation Day, Tuesday, the first full week in May. So the first week of May is when they celebrate uh, this National Teacher Appreciation mm-hmm. Week. And um, it says it's known also as National Teacher Day and it recognises dedicated educators across the country as part of Teacher Appreciation Week. Nice. It says teachers play a critical role in educating and shaping our children, the future leaders of our country. These kind, patient, hardworking, dedicated and understanding professionals help mould our children and guide them in a positive direction. We entrust our children with teachers and they affect their lives daily. This is very true. Well, they do. I didn't have um, great teachers because no one really inspired me. Mm. And um, I I recall even in at uni, being one of only two black women in a class of 100 Mm. um, males. So on the whole course, I think there was about four women. Wow. Two of them were uh, black, myself and Nicole. Mm. And um, we were doing this, it was big desks, you know, the mixing desks. Yeah. And the teacher called me Dim. <laughs> oh, that's rude. He called me Dim. You don't say that to children. Yeah. Students. But it, it didn't phase me because I said, right, I'm going to show you. Mm. I always sat in the front of the class mm. and I come out uh, with quite a high higher two one it would have been nice to see who i had in my um master's group but i never got to meet anyone that i was studying with at the same time so. is that because you was online yeah all online well but my my teaching group my um pgc group was a mixture really like a different mix of people which is nice always. it was very nice because you got to you see different types of people's different methods of teaching yeah. if that makes sense um and our lecturer was hilarious. He, Wilkie, he left, but he was really, really funny. So you got the, the best of the last, like, because he, did he retire yeah, or did he, he go no, somewhere else? No, he went somewhere else. He went to teach in, um, somewhere in Brighton. He was a professor. He got a professor job in Brighton. Mm-hmm. Um, but our next um, lecturer, he was the head of the department. He, he was made, He was really good. He was really good. Yeah. Nice. And the, um, what it's saying um, here as well, it says, we entrust our children to t- with teachers. And they affect their lives daily. You said that just now, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, sorry, that was a bit deja vu there, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, and they do affect, like we said, we, we were quite, um, you had a lovely teacher, Wilkie, mm. on my part, sadly, no. Mm. But that, yes, it's very important to kind of nurture 
our youngsters mm. so that they can grow up and thankfully I didn't take it to heart yeah. what some of these people said I, he called me dim so I had to prove a point and I think <clears throat> in one of the instances um, there was only just um, s- certain people mm. that achieved certain things and yeah. I, I asked him I, 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 I called him one time because I'd done some work for this same teacher and um, I said, who do you think is going to finish this course and who's going to finish like top set? And he mm. said, oh, all the ones that are here s- sitting on the front, on the front line and so said, so done. Mm. He knew. Because you, you always and you always remember your best and your worst. You remember your best mm. teacher. You remember your worst teacher. My worst teacher was a science teacher. She was. Re- you remember was that her. the horsewoman? You see? Okay. You, <laughs> and you wasn't even taught by her. <laughs> She was rude to us as her parents. She literally walked in the class one day Mm. and said, right, girls, because I went to a girl's school, (laughs) right, girls, today you can teach yourself because, quite frankly, I can't be bothered. Terrible. And I was like, like, okay. And then I got told off for not doing no work. (laughs) I'm like, but I'm not qualified to teach. Yeah. (laughs) And that's the hardest thing as well because we have, it's teach, teach national teacher appreciation day mm. and like you said we get the good ones and we get the bad ones yeah so it's filtering out all the bad ones because again it's the motivation as to why someone's in a teaching position yeah. in the first place yeah and um if they're going to come in and say exactly like your teacher did there mm. then she's going to get bad results yeah oh well, yeah and none of the children are going, going to like you no but you don't have to have your children... The children don't have to like you. I've learned this as a teacher mm. myself. Your students don't have to like you. They will hate you for a minute. I say this to all my students. You will hate me for a minute and you'll love me for a lifetime. Because mm. in that minute when I'm telling you and I'm on your back about getting work done, yeah. you hate me. Mm. <sighs> Why is Alicia on my back? <laughs> but when you pass with flying colours, yeah, you'll love me for a lifetime. And yeah. I've got some students who um, have done exceptionally well. My My first ever... Um, tutor group way back in 2017 um, I have some in that group that did exceptionally well and Ooh. are still doing very well with their careers Brilliant. Um, which is nice to see you know still having have that contact with your with your students um, and there's one teacher in particular I think about when we was younger she taught uh, well she's not a teacher she's a teacher's assistant but I see her as a teacher mm. um, she taught Marjorie and John Ash and now she's been looking after my little one Aww. and it's like wow you really have made an impact on all of our life because everyone mm. remembers her everyone yeah. remembers that teacher that we've had shout out to Miss Cozier because she's not very well at the moment mm. so giving you a big shout out Miss Cozier because you are fabulous she's fabulous teacher appreciation days and the, the children love Miss Cozier yeah they do all of them because she's like she's like a mum like, yeah she is she is looks like teaches them well sees their progress mm. and it's it's really nice when you go back and visit your teachers yeah you know, the ones that have made an impact and, and influence, influenced you yeah. growing up. And I think it says, how do we observe the hashtag Teacher Appreciation Day? Um, refill their supplies is one of the, the points that it brings out here. Mm. Anything else, Lily? Yeah, you can write a letter showing your support. Your words may encourage a teacher to continue making a difference in a child's life. Mm. Ask them what they need the most. Sometimes being asked is the most important part. Volunteer in your schools. Everyday schools rely on parent support for many school programmes to succeed. And I think that's true. I think especially now in this, um, you know in this time where we're going through COVID season and a lot of children were disadvantaged because Mm. not everyone got to go into school during that lockdown period. Um, And the teachers were in a classroom with no children. That's hard. Yeah. That is very hard to do. And some schools need supplies. Mm. Um, Some of the more disadvantaged schools weren't able to get small things out to children. you know, and it could be something as simple as being available for a, a, a lunchtime session or helping mm. in the playground after school, you know. Just to put yourself out, really, isn't it, as a parent? Because at the end of the day, school isn't a babysitting service as well. All right, the teachers aren't there to molly coddle and, and look after them in that mm. way. Okay, so maybe as parents, like I said, to be involved, get involved, 
with the with the, your teachers, get to know your, the teachers teaching your children. Yeah, and um, yeah, that's that's very very important. All right, so national. This is hashtag uh, national or teacher appreciation day. Okay, so see how you can help out, and let's give out a big high five to all the good teachers out there, even the bad ones, because I guess that sometimes you just have a bad day, so, don't yeah, you? Yeah. And get up out of the wrong side of the bed. And one teacher said to me one time when I, when I um, worked at a school, she said to me, some teachers or people in general, may you might be the only person that they'll see that entire day mm. they go home they're on their own yeah they don't have family they don't even have friends mm. so we've got to keep that in mind as well mm. we don't know the backgrounds of our teachers either do we no, yeah. so that's something else to just keep in mind so high five to all you great teachers out there just keep up the, the, the awesome work and yeah we're celebrating you for a week but we should celebrate you every day every day like we say all right, it's not just for one day, but every day. All right, so that's National Day today. Yeah. Another really important, um, um, interesting fact, should I say, was that today, on May the 4th in 1961, was the first Freedom Riders journey, right? Does, does anyone out there know what a Freedom Rider, or sorry, Freedom Rider is, okay? Have you heard of that Freedom Rider before? Nope. Okay, well, this it, it was a, a civil rights group, and um, they were mixed. So they were a group of, I think it was four white people mm -hmm. and five black um, people. Mm -hmm. And what it was that they wanted to ride around the country mm -hmm. in solidarity for um, highlighting, obviously, the civil rights um, move, civil rights movement, and really wanting to cut segregation out mm. so they, these guys would get on the bus and they they would ride together but they they got a lot of backlash from doing that as you do yeah they got a lot of back backlash and um yeah it, it said that because they meet at segregated bus stations mm -hmm. so could you imagine that a meeting in the segregated place where it's whites only mm -hmm. but it's white and black people together meet together yeah and sadly, yeah, KKK, all sorts of things happened to these these people. The group included, sorry, seven black and six white riders. Mm. And they rode the, uh, the Greyhound buses, the railways, the trailways. And I think they, when they finished the freedom riding, mm -hmm. they ended, I think they took a flight. Yeah, so is it, they ended their journey um they finished their journey to New Orleans mm. by airplane. I've always wanted to go to New Orleans. Really? Yeah. I don't know. America's never really called me. Per, I just, per se. I think it's the culture. You know, mm. when you see the culture, it just seems so, it draws me. Yeah. It draws me. But is, New Orleans is where they had the floods, wasn't it? Where they left them all as well. A Katrina. while back. Yeah, yeah. Katrina. Um, so that was quite another sad kind of side of it. But yeah, all of the flair yeah. and the music, the jails. Because I'm sure they had um, oh, they had a women's event, a black women event there a couple mm. of years ago. I um, can't remember what event it was, but there's always something going mm. on in the streets and the jazz and the food. And yeah, the I'd, like that. I'd like to ah! try the food, try the food. Yeah. It looks very, very appealing because it's cajun it's cajun creole food isn't it mm. i'd love to just go and have it even for a day like i don't <laughs> want to stay there for too long you know, it's yeah. weather. Um, but i'd like to have the experience of new orleans it's quite sad in you saying that we're talking about um because you said because it's america so yeah it, that was the point that you made yeah and it's got all of that lovely wealth of culture mm. and all of those things. And we're talking about the Freedom Riders, yeah? Mm. But, sadly, you said, but it's America. Yeah. This thing still is continuous, isn't it? It's just so, like... So, 
to be fair, we went to um, US a couple of years ago and I didn't really feel any type of way. It was there yeah. with our husbands and friends and stuff and it was fine. We didn't feel any type of way, but we was kind of in our own world, if you yeah. get what I mean. Like we had our own villa. It wasn't mixing with that many people. Mm. But you went um, as tourists as well, right? And we went as tourists. Yeah. But I mean, we had our own car and stuff. So that always presents its issues if you don't know what you're doing right um like there's obviously certain rules that we had to follow and stuff while mm. i was there and stuff but i don't know if going down south would be different i don't know why would it be wise mind you florida is south isn't it it is but the, the more south you go <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> the more south you go i don't know i don't know I don't know if it'd be that bad there. Where's I have someone that lives in Atlanta. Oh, she used to live in Atlanta. And she um, recommended, she's like, you have to come here. It's amazing. Okay. She's English. All right. Well, she's got dual citizenship. She lives out there now. She lives it's in Philadelphia. It's Georgia as well. Is it Georgia, Atlanta? Is yeah. It? Okay, Atlanta, so that Georgia. is south, isn't it? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, but, but she then... said it's like going to the part that she was telling me about. She's mm. like going to Beverly Hills, but your neighbours are all black and you don't look like the odd one out. Exactly, but that's the difference. It's amazing when you go there. Like in um, uh, Atlanta is primarily um, black folk that live there. Yeah, yeah. So I guess you wouldn't be too out of of sync there. Mm. And do we hear of much, um, you know, the gun, the police incidents? Is there much of that in Atlanta? There's much of that everywhere in America. And to be, everywhere. Do we do we really pay attention to where it is? We hear such and such happened in the US. We don't specifically, we don't think about, oh, that happened in Atlanta this week and that happened mm. in Florida that week. We just hear what happened on the news. And that's, that's the sad thing we do yeah. as well, isn't it? Because when we think, it's so the Freedom Riders uh, were groups of white and African-American civil rights activists who participated in Freedom Rides. Bus trips through the America South in 1961 to protest segregated bus terminals. So they were segregated. I'm um, talking about segregated bus terminals. And freedom riders tried to use whites only restaurants. Oh, wow. And lunch wow. counters at bus stations and in Alabama, South Carolina, and other southern states. The groups were confronted by arresting police officers as well as horrific violence from white protesters along their routes, but also drew international attention to the civil rights movement. Mm. Now, again, going back to that, they still segregate, kind of, in the States, don't they? Yeah, but I feel like they... I, oof, I don't know. I feel like they kind of do it to... You know there's black areas, there's white areas. Mm. Some black folk don't mind going... mind living in the white suburban areas. yeah. Um, but others want to be amongst their own people, so to speak. Okay. So they'll more than likely go and live in the black populated areas, suburban areas. Yeah. yeah. Kind of, we don't have it in London so much because everyone just kind of lives together. Well, we kind of do. Do you think so? Yeah. You know where all the Africans are, where the Jamaicans are. You go to Brixton. Where's the Jamaicans? And South America. South America. <laughs> Brixton and South London, you know, that's predominantly a black area. Not anymore, Leash. But it is, though. We have we have more, less... Our area is mainly populated by the Spanish. What, round here? Mm-hmm. But in, in, We've got a high Spanish population. In here. Tottenham, I think there's about 200 and something, over 200 nationalities. That live in Harringay. Yeah, but it's, we're talking about the predominant. We're, we're not saying in America there's one spot where you're just going to have all... Well, yeah, you, you will have spots where there's just all white. Will, yeah. But because we live in London, we see me- metropolitan. We yeah. see a mix of people. Yeah. Or cosmopolitan. Yeah. We see a mix of people. But even within London, there are areas that you think that is more of a... Okay, I, I hear you, I hear you. But it's, it's, it's more place. mix and blend, though, still. Yeah. Because I can walk out, even if I walk to somewhere like Hampstead or, yeah. you know, Muswell Hill, I'm still going to see my my people there. Yeah. But then if you went in to Hartford, 
mm. you have to spot the black person because we, yeah, that's true. we played that game and we tried to go and look for houses. So oh, wow. <laughs> you do, and then you know that there's not that many black people there because when the black person spots you, they're like, hey, you're right. <laughs> you know, you, you always know that you're the minority in that area because they notice you yeah. and they always say hello. Yeah, so, but they're friendly. It's not, yeah. It doesn't come with any negativity. No, yeah, no negativity, no negativity. So that's really, really good. So national, it was the first Freedom Riders ride, um, the fourth of May, nineteen sixty one, and sadly, uh, yes, we know that um, America has a long, long way to go when it comes to civil rights. Mm. Yeah, even things like Jim Crow laws, we know that they were changed with something else. Mm. And I think recently, has anything gone through Congress to look at the, the situation when it comes to? how black people are treated. I saw this judge yesterday, and I think it was a policeman. He beat a man Mm -hmm. for nothing. He just asked him to get out of his car, started beating him. Then his friends come along, started beating him. But the judge was a black judge, Mm. and she tore them to pieces. Mm. She really did, because she said in this day and age, Mm. this stuff is still happening. But it shouldn't have to be a black judge. That's the Mm. problem. Yes, that's true. The problem is the black judge will side with the, the... black party because they or not always side they'll side with the side of justice yes yeah yeah whereas you've got other judges like that little old white judge that was Mm. giving people pardons and Mm. stuff like that you need more judges like him lovely yeah because it's all well and god us saying oh yeah she was a black judge and she took side of course she's going to take their side that's what most people Mm. will expect i don't think she took this side but like you said, she took the side of justice. Yeah. More than, oh, well, you're just a Negro and yeah. it happens, you know, and then then people get off. Mm. Um, the, I was going to mention something else, but it's kind of irrelevant. Mm. So, at the, yeah, you're right. It's so we need more justice. of the more of the others on mm. our side. It, there are, they are there. Yeah. And we do just see a lot of negativity because that's what we're being shown. Mm. Um, but... We need to see more of those positive um, outcomes. Yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. But um, Freedom Riders, it's lovely that... The thing is, it's not about colour at mm. all, really. And that's sometimes that is what kind of holds us back. It's yeah. really strange because my psychology um, class today was talking about um, prejudices as well as um, stereotypes. Yes. And how... Can you can anyone out there truly say that they are free from prejudice? No. Can anyone and don't just say no, you've got to know the reasons why. Okay? Knowing the reasons why. And that's what was lovely about these freedom riders that they came together for a cause to try and stop the segregation of these mm. bus stations. So the word of the day, Lily. Yes. You see what it is? It is <clears throat> succumb. Succumb. And I know that word. Yeah, I think a lot of our uh, listeners know that word. So, beautiful people, I'm not even going to ask you what it means. Oh, I'm, I'm going to ask you what it means. And should we give out a prize today? What do you think, Leish? Um, not for the not for the word of the day. I don't. I don't know. What do you think? Should we give out a prize? <laughs> I don't know, I should let them know when we come back after the break. Okay, so we'll let you know. Actually, I feel I do feel a prize coming on, you know. Yeah, same. I feel like I feel like you have to know a brand that's willing to give away a free t shirt. Oh but there are some things that you will need to do. Remember, yes, remember that we have one exclusive t shirt left at the moment. Mm. We will be getting some more merch. I'm sure. Uh, Or we'll be getting some prizes to give out. So this is an exclusive, exclusive. It's a black and gold one. Oh, nice. Really cute. All flavours t-shirt. So we'll be with you in five. See you in a moment. Stay there. We'll be back after these. My name's Phil. My name's John. I'm 19 years old. I'm 19 too. I've got leukaemia. I've got leukaemia. Chemotherapy didn't work on me, nor did radiotherapy. They didn't work for me either. So now, a bone marrow transplant's my last hope. It's my last hope too. (laughs) They found me a matching donor. They can't find a donor for me. I'm white. I'm black. I'm having a transplant next week that could save my life.
there are 24 times more white people than black on the UK bone marrow register. If you're black or mixed race, join the register today. Visit ACLT.org and see how you could be the one to save a life. ACLT, unite to fight leukemia. Raw View Music presents Alicia Banks on Upfront, a seven-track compilation, including the hit Love Has Found Its Way. Love Has Found Its Way In Our Hearts Today Sultry, clear and upfront. Upfront, now available on iTunes and all major digital platforms. Download and stream Love Has Found Its Way and the EP Upfront today at rawvuemusic.com, iTunes, or your preferred online platform. Alicia Banks on Upfront. Upfront. Coming to a speaker near you. Love has found its way. Different, 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 different. Different tastes in music. Makes no difference what you like. If you want it, we got it. Right here. Allflamersradio.com. The number one radio station on the net. Reaching 179 countries in the world. With the best variety of music. That one was the sounds of William Devon. Part one, be thankful. And yes, we should be thankful, shouldn't we, Lily? Should be very thankful for everything that we got, right? Yes, absolutely. Because we just don't know. Um, like we spoke of, especially being out in the states, what it's like out there. Mm. We are thankful that at least there's some kind of um living together. Seg- um, we're all segregated as opposed to segre non. All non, all congregated. Congregated, not segregated. segregated. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Mm. <laughs> I tell you, I've been feeling ill all day. I'm not even going to, feeling a bit rough. So the words to come, word of the day. We have decided that we will run a competition today. So you have to have been listening throughout the show. So the first question we're going to ask you is, how many Freedom Riders were there? How many Freedom Riders were there t- all together? Okay. And what year did it start? What day and what year? So that's the first question. We'll, we'll be putting that through there as well. And also the question of the day today is, let's see where it is, should places of work provide childcare for their female employers, employees, employees? Not just female. And male, yeah. What can I hear you, Lily? Did I? Oh. There you are. Yeah, so should places of work provide childcare? All right, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna tackle that one a bit later on, but the word of the day to come it just means to yield, right? You, yeah. you said you knew that. Succumb, I thought meant to give in to. To yield. Oh, okay, we're gonna use that fancy word now. <laughs> it's a fancy, one. fancy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it's like you're yielding to someone that's over you, that's superior to you. You succumb mm. to that person, like I succumb to you, or I, I surrender. Yes. It's kind of like that. So it's a, or a force overpowering you. Okay, I surrender, I surrender. Yeah. To be brought to an end, such as death, by the Aye. effect of destructive or disruptive forces. Yeah, they succumb to. Oh, they yeah, to they succumb to. Mm. Yeah. So that's the word of the day. We do like doing the word of the day. This one was a relatively easy one. It's also a French word again. Last, yeah. word, last week's word was French. Today's oh, was word it? Was French. Okay. It says, if the idea of someone succumbing brings you brings to mind the image of a person lying down <clears throat> before more powerful forces, you have an excellent grasp of the Latin that What's gave Latin? English succumb. Succumb derives from the French word succombre. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which it... Which is itself from the Latin word succombre. Mm-hmm. Sounded very English. Succombre, <laughs> meaning to fall down. Or if you're looking at here, it looks like succu- cucumber. Succu- cucumber. <laughs> That's what it looks like. <laughs> it looks oh like. My goodness. Yeah, it does. Cumber. <laughs> yeah, to fall under. down. See? Forms combining the word sub, meaning under, mm. with cumber, meaning to lie down. Ooh, I thought it was slumber. Lying down. 
still got the word umber yes in it's it. very true yeah so see the language when you break down the language mm. a lot of it, i think a lot of the english language does come from latin mm-hmm. uh, along with other th- along with other things yeah and english is one of the hardest languages to learn as well yes it is uh, how many languages do we know do we know any like of our na- n- african tongues or patois from i'm trying to learn creole creole it's very challenging why is it challenging? Because there are so many words. But isn't and Creole if, French? It's, kind of broken French. Yeah. Mm. So I thought, oh yeah, this would be, you know, easy. Because I picked up Spanish quite easily. Mm. Even though I don't speak it very well now. But I did speak it quite Absolutely, frequently before. Yeah. I thought, oh, that's great. Yeah, words will be very similar. Nope. Mm-mm. Completely different words. But they small. But Creole... Is from a French background. Spanish isn't, even though it is Latin language. Yeah. And a lot of the Latin language is similar. Yeah. Um, Creole is, remember, it's, and it's funny, I heard these two women, we were walking in Walthamstow the other day, and they were walking, and they weren't Jamaican, mm. but I understood them. And what I noticed, a lot of the patois mm. is from Gambia. There's words that they yeah. say. Oh, not Gambia, um, Nigeria, Ghana, Ghana, or Nigeria, yeah. yeah. And a lot of the words that they say mm. are words that, um, Patois, the Patois language. I, I watch, I follow this um, young boy on TikTok, and he, yes, guys, I do have a TikTok, and he um, shows the similarities between African words Ooh. and Jamaican words. Yeah. And there are a lot of um, R patois words mm. that come from i think one of them was it was Ghanaian. it was a lot of the the words were from ghana See? words like duppy and oh what was the other one that made me laugh i can't <laughs> remember i'll find it and I'll, I'll let you know but duppy was one of them it comes from it was tree or gar one of them mm. so I, we do dire- yeah i recognize that i was like uh oh, but they're not but it was it had the African twang, yeah. but it was like Jamaican, yeah, patois, yeah, really, really bizarre. But yes, language is an amazing, amazing thing. So another thing that um, was I was sent in the week, and that I saw in the week was the fact that there's been a lot of um, attempted child abductions, mm. as well as child child children missing. So I just thought that we would bring that up today because. It really is a cause for concern and it's better to be vigilant mm. than to not be vigilant and then trouble yeah. on, the, on the horizon. So that on Friday, it was on Friday, and there was a young boy that it was at about four o'clock in Croydon. Mm-hmm. I'm just reading it from the thing here. Near Beckenham, Wreck Park, two hooded men on foot, and another in a car. Now they attempted to abduct this young boy, this lady's son, well, he was on his way home from school. Oh dear. Okay. They chased him into the park, but he ran into the basketball court to two older teenagers for help. Mm. The men then disappeared. All right. So please, please, please warn your children as they are, uh, the frequency um, says, as the frequency of the children going missing in South London right now is frightening. Frightening. Now, this is something that we're not hearing much of. No, it, I have heard this because mm. um, something else was going around. There have been, in the last, I'm going to say year, mm. I've seen three to five um, kind of posts of this person's missing yeah from greenwich from lewisham from this area mm. um all young black children that have gone missing yeah and no it hasn't had media coverage because i haven't seen it on the news well i don't really watch the news but i haven't seen it as breaking news anything up on my phone i didn't even see it in the voice <clears throat> newspaper leash because this young boy javon andrew perry mm. he's gone missing mm. so if anyone his name is javon andrew perry he's 13 years old and he's been missing from Waltham Cross. Now, Waltham Cross is a hot spot. Waltham... Waltham Cross. No, Waltham Forest. As a Waltham Forest is a, is a hot, hot spot. spot. Well, but, <laughs> looks yeah. like here, Waltham Cross seems to be somewhere. Mm. It's had no local press coverage, so please help us by sharing. Call or text 116007 with any information. Mm. All right, so he's been missing since the 24th of April. So that's so only we... last week. 
that he's been missing a week. All right. And then these young ones after school, a lot of youngsters. I think we had one at the end there as well. Yeah. So we got warned by um, the school that there was someone who was trying to get little children into his white van. And that was literally just at the top of the, well, it wasn't at the top of the estate. It was in the Hale village Mm. that he was trying. And he said, oh, I've got sweets in my van. And then one of the little um, girls who had quite good sense to say, no, we're not going in your van. Mm. And took her friends and kind of walked off in the opposite direction. Um, But we did get warned as parents to say, look out for people like this. They are snatch and grabbers. And there have been other incidences as well. Um, of someone in Waltham Forest where the woman um, saw her son being eyed up by these two people in the park. Yeah. Um, and they were trying to object to the little children. So beautiful people, please be vigilant because our children are precious. We know that. And um, yeah, we wouldn't want anything to happen to them. So please share the information as well. Um, like I said, I'll give you that number again um let me just find it sorry and yeah if you if you can pick your kids up from school that's great if they're going to walk home let them walk home as a group make that yeah make sure they've got a group to yeah go so that number again is double one six double oh seven okay with any info oh, so no it's double one six treble o I don't know why that one's got a seven there. It's tr- double one six treble O. This is Javon Andrew Perry. Let's hope he's returned home safely to his parents. Okay. So yeah, lots of things happening. Yeah, it's quite, quite sad. That, you yeah. know, I remember when we were younger, we just used to walk to school, and obviously there must have been um, threats out there. And mm. when you're a child, you don't see the threat. You just you do see the weird man that I remember a man putting um we thought they were poison beans um on the steps outside school Mm. um and then he was there and then he wasn't and that was quite as a must have been about eight six between six and eight at the time and I remember thinking that was weird um but what made you as a young person think that it was weird because why was a old man or not an old I say old he was most probably in his days or 40s mm. but I'm it was a big man six to eight so that's old to yeah. me um why was that person hanging around the outside the school putting beans on the step mm. that's weird and as a small child you recognize weird <laughs> yeah. you recognize it doesn't matter how old you are you recognize weird um but do you have do your do our children have the sense mm. to be aware of how to act it's funny because Jayla's teacher said to me a little while ago this was before lockdown they had a police um person go in and teach them about stranger danger and whatnot mm. she goes oh Jayla was very good she knew exactly what to do and I'm like yeah because I've taught her from the young to know if someone tries to grab you what you do mm. not none mm. of this nah, no what you where you scratch kick shout bite i've told her what she needs to do so it's really again parents yes. instilling this th- these things in our youngsters mm. so that we know that they are safe that they will be safe yeah and, and not being fearful of trying to oh i've I, you know it's gonna break their innocence would you prefer to break their innocence for a moment so then i had to protect mm. themselves yeah yeah. Or be fearful of what happens if they don't know how to protect themselves. Mm. I'd prefer for her to kick and scream and bite and draw blood. Yeah. And yeah. then come back and say, Mummy, I drew blood. Well, <laughs> you know? well done, darling. Well done. Yes. That's what you'd say. You've got to teach them from young. Absolutely. So beautiful people, we'll see y'all in five. Oh, on 07 That's 07 Stay there. We'll be back after these. My name's Phil. My name's John. I'm 19 years old. I'm 19 too. I've got leukaemia. I've got leukaemia. Chemotherapy didn't work on me, nor did radiotherapy. They didn't work for me either. So now, a bone marrow transplant's my last hope. It's my last hope too. They found me a matching donor. They can't find a donor for me. I'm white. 
I'm black. I'm having a transplant next week that could save my life. There are 24 times more white people than black on the UK bone marrow register. If you're black or mixed race, join the register today. Visit ACLT.org and see how you could be the one to save a life. ACLT, unite to fight leukemia. Raw View Music presents Alicia Banks on Upfront, a seven track compilation, including the hit Love Has Found Its Way. Love Has Found Its Way. In our hearts today. Yeah. Sultry. Love Clear and upfront. Up front. In our hearts today. Music barriers. Upfront. Up front. Now available on iTunes and all major digital platforms. Download and stream Love Has Found Its Way and the EP Upfront today at rawvuemusic.com, iTunes, or your preferred online platform. Alicia Banks on Upfront. Upfront. Coming to a speaker near you. Love Has Found Its Way. Different, 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 different tastes of music. Makes no difference what you like. If you want it, we got it. Right here. Allflavorsradio.com Oh, they don't make them like that anymore, do they, Lily? Not at all. That's good vibes music right there. Good vibes music, absolutely. So the, the first one was Michael Jackson from his Off The Wall album. Um, was it Working Day and Night? And that was the OJs, was it? Yeah, the OJs, Love Train. Did you know that the... Oh, sorry, Lily. It's okay. Did you know that the Off The Wall album was initially supposed to be a Jacksons album? Wow. And when you listen, you hear the Jacksons in the album, mm. but it became Michael's first solo album. Wow. It was an um, amazing it album. Really was. Amazing. amazing. Rod Temperton wrote a few of the tracks on there as well. Mm. Um, we knew... We knew Rod Temperton, the Heat Wave, because he was the keyboard player. Wow. For Heat, for Heat Wave. And um, yeah, great songwriter. Mm. And he went on to write on uh, Thriller. I think yeah. Th- no, was Thriller, Thriller was the next one after that, right? Thriller was. Yeah, it was Off the Wall. Then. I don't know. Was it I Off think, the Wall? Yeah, Off the Wall was his first album. And then Thriller came wow. after. Wow. Wow. I mean, he just was. Very great artist who is sadly, sadly missed, isn't he, Michael? So the question that we're asking beautiful people, or should we just do the competition question again? Which I've forgotten. Oh, the Freedom (laughs) Riders. So how many Freedom Riders were there? And what was the day, month and year they began? Yes, yeah. And the question that we're going to be looking at now is should places of work provide childcare? Um, we've already had an um, answer. I think Pele um, answered that question in earlier. Let's see if I can find these questions. I will go back to that one. Um, but should, would you think, Lily? Yeah, they want you to come back to work. They should provide childcare. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of workplaces have on-site childcare and charge extortionate prices yes. and then say oh but you can do the voucher scheme or the take it out of your wages scheme mm. which is a liberty now you're just paying me to pay you to pay for childcare <laughs> <laughs> so it should be subsidized really shouldn't it yeah i mean i don't think it's subsidized still even if you get vouchers and not. you've got two children in a, a nursery Yes. Yeah, um, that you know that it's still going to cost a lot. And the article, Pele says, said that yes, places of work provide should provide um, childcare or at least make it affordable. Mm. It's ex- an expensive business, childcare. It really is. You've yeah. got 10 children in a class, in a nursery, and you're charging, and this is not what they're charging, but you're charging each parent £600 a day. That's true. Sorry, a month. Yeah. That's like, it's a, it's a, it's a, man, I should start a childcare business. It's a business, isn't it? I know you have to keep businesses afloat, mm. but if you're, as large corporations, not talking about small businesses, talking about larger corporations, mm. I do think that the large corporations should provide childcare for 
their staff and not just for the mothers because everyone makes it is the mothers that get affected more so yeah when it comes to childcare they're the ones that have to decide whether or not they're going to go back to work dad doesn't really decide that most of the time um and if baby's sick most of the time it's mom. where's the mum and yeah. my husband has literally been asked that question oh mm. my daughter's not well um i need to take the day off work where's the mum wow mum's starting a new job so she can't watch yeah. <laughs> do you know what i mean it's like it's it always falls on the mum whereas it's both parents that childcare should be for mm. um and sometimes the times of childcare as well like if you start work at eight and finish at eight but your childcare is only from eight till six then what do you do then you've got to pay a childminder for those extra three yeah. and it's not for if you pay from seven to drop them to to nursery and then mm. until nine yeah so it's it is a sad sad situation mm. this um article highlights this is a generation of women-led business women-led businesses could be lost if, if britain for, fails to start revolution in child care warns leading entrepreneur mm. it says a generation of women-led businesses could be lost to the london economy if a revolution in child care is not started across the uk a leading entrepreneur has warned as children across the UK return to school and Ren Kapoor MBE has warned that childcare responsibilities remain the biggest barrier in place for many female entrepreneurs. Now, this is talking about entrepreneurs. I don't know if I agree with that. Right. Okay. Because as an entrepreneur, you kind of, not that you dictate your time, but yes, it's hard to work at home with a child I've done it it's tough and it's very challenging Mm. um but if you're talking about should the workplace provide childcare, then you are the workplace yeah that's true because you're an entrepreneur you work for yourself Mm. um but this is stating that business women-led businesses will take a tumble if if child care is not looked at so and as likewise, in, I've got my own agency and I get pregnant and I need someone to watch my child while I run my business with yeah. my 10 staff that I have. And likewise with the work, I, I know that it, it, this one is based on women mm. and being female entrepreneurs, mm. that's what it is. But I still feel that the question that's been posed, should, uh, biz, should employees mm. provide childcare, a place for you know females to bring or males to bring mm. their children yeah so it that too can make it easier on one uh, i think that if they had more of that yeah that they'd have a higher work ratio yeah you'd have a you yeah. i think you'd have a lower turnover in the sense that less um women would be leaving the workplace to become entrepreneurs mm. because they enjoy coming to work a lot of people forget that um coming back to work for a woman say for example who's had a baby and she's come back from maternity leave that might be the only the first time in ages Mm. other than her partner that she's had if she has a partner that she's had some human interaction she spent the last three six nine twelve months being mummy Mm. okay darling you can doing all of that nonsense mm. for the last 12 months when you go into the workplace it's almost refreshing yeah it's like a mental break you love your children but you just need six hours to feel like an adult mm. and i will speak from experience when i say that going back into the workplace yes it was challenging after um going back after maternity leave but just some normal conversation yeah getting back into the workplace and a lot of a lot of employers lose the employees because they don't make the provision for childcare a lot of uh, most most um places don't make provision mm. for childcare yeah and I and mean, when they do it's ridiculously expensive the thing is that this caper they said the latest data from Ofsted says that almost a quarter of the 75,336 registered nurseries are expected to close over the next 12 months. And it says that's a potential 20,000 businesses. These are worrying statistics. So that's, yeah. Um, wow. Yeah, a quarter, a qu- 
quarter, I don't know, could anyone work that out for us? 75,336, a quarter of that. A quarter of, um, that's a lot that's of a lot of children. Yes, yeah, a lot of That's yeah. a lot of children. And it's, it's such a shame because um, some of the biggest industries are run by females. Mm. I'm going to oh. talk about the NHS. Yeah. It's very mixed, but it's got a very, very large female population mm. who do go off and have babies and they don't have just one baby. They'll have a couple. Um, and some of them have to take career break. I know someone that's just come back from a career break purely because the cost of having two children quite close together meant that she couldn't afford to come back to work. Mm. How can you not afford to come back to work? Do you know what I mean? It's just, it doesn't make any sense. But it was more cost effective for her to take two years off of work. Mm. So now you've lost an employee for two years that you've got to hold that space for whilst paying someone else to do that person's job when you could have made put that provision in place mm. to support that person whilst they're at work. Yeah. And it's even the mental anguish of knowing, oh, now I've got to rush out the door because I've got to travel an hour back to go and pick up the baby from nursery. Yeah. And then by the time we get home, I've got to do da 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 it's, it's stressful. It's very stressful. And I don't think I've ever seen, this might be for all you budding entrepreneurs out there, this is a very, very good idea. So mm. the city... You're giving away your ideas again. I, I have too many ideas so I'm going to give some away I'm because <laughs> I, you know they come to me but just yeah. this is very inspiring and the city in the city there's no I don't see crash facilities or childcare facilities in the city so those kind of places um, to set something up for mm. women or men mm. parents should we say parents yeah. of children because some husband and wife share the responsibility mm. um Somewhere to drop the children, yeah. It's actually really innovative because there's a lot idea, of there's a lot of empty buildings now. Let's think about a lot, a lot of people were working from home. Yeah. I know a lot of people have gone back into the workplace, mm. but there's a lot of office space that didn't get um, didn't get re you know get used again. I know some um, some businesses that have actually because they didn't have enough staff, mm. they've collaborated with another business in the same building mm. to share space, which means that whatever building they were in before is now vacant. Yeah. So there's loads of spaces where you can have on the ground level or the level one, for example, a creche, a nursery yep, for children, definitely. for people in that block. And you just collaborate with the businesses that are in that block yes. to provide childcare for yeah. those employees. It's, it's It sounds, oh yes, t- you know, easier said than done. Yes, it is. Obviously, there's different, um, oops, there's different um, rules and regulations that you'd have to follow. Mm. But it's a provision that can be made. And I know that there are some countries, I think yeah, I'm just about to Eastern look European countries, they provide, well, women, some women get maternity leave for like five years until the children yeah. are ready to go to school. I think the children don't start school till they're quite late on as well. Five I think. or six, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I, 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 and Di Carlo's made a point there, Lisa. Yeah, he said, if your boss pays for, um, for childcare, some people would take liberties with where and how much is spent. Well, no, I don't, I don't think they can take liberties. I think if you say, for example, you know, your child, you go back to work after a year, you know that your child is going to have to be in nursery until they're at least three. Mm. Yeah, you have something that stipulates yes childcare is provided here for your one your one child or two children because now child benefit only covers two children anyway so Mm. for your two children until the age of three and then they need to go to a school nursery then obviously you need to make um adjustments or whatever that you might need to make which is fair enough you've been provided for for two years but they can make those exceptions, just a helping females, a helping yeah. families Parents, back yeah. into the workplace. The thing is, what would, the, what would the tube be like in the morning with all the children on it? Shocking. <laughs> I would not be getting that the drinks. Next, <laughs> that's the next issue that you'd be up against, like, you know, with all the No, you just have there. school buses like they do in America for what, babies. Going into the city. Do you know what's funny? I'm not giving this idea away because I still think he should do it. Jay had a very, very good idea for mm. public transport for pregnant mothers and children. Yeah. Um, and in this instance, scenario, that concept yeah. would work. Yeah. 
there yeah. would be a lot of things that you'd have to think about. It would, the the three plus million that they spent on free travel, it would restock that deficit mm. if they did make those provisions. You've got more people travelling into the city because they're coming back into work yeah. happily, knowing that childcare is being provided for. And it would be like a sub, maybe a subsidised um, subsidised rate that mm. they charge as well. Do it on like a percentage of your earnings yeah. for the year or something, you know, not putting people at the fact that they're just coming into work to pay for... I know people that just come into work to have a chat because all of their wages goes on childcare. Wow. It is costly. That's not fair. It is costly. So this is, um, there is the possibility women might be trapped in an economic and social ambush. You lose your job and have a bright business idea, mm. but then your local nursery closes and either another is out of your area mm. or it's too costly. Yeah. So your business idea is ditched and you remain at home to look after your children. Mm. This scenario will see fewer businesses and increased equality, inequality. Although I know that, like you said, a lot of women have started businesses but we've seen that the say the side that this is saying where they've said oh, i've got a really great business idea but my focus right now is my babies mm, mm. because you just physically can't concentrate on two things at once yeah especially if your children are quite demanding and then that's where childcare would come in exactly and if the childcare isn't being provided or it's not mm. it's not cost effective for you mm. then you do just put it on hold until the children are ready to go to school i know of a lady she lives locally and i just met her last week we're going to be getting her on the show as well and she has a home kind of nursery so mm-hmm. that might be the next best thing like a home nursery but she's ofsted yeah um registered she's looks she's all very well to do yeah so you maybe still have that's... to do all the qualifications and everything oh, yeah, that comes yeah, along yeah, with yeah. it. Yeah, it would be, but she, it's proper. Like, but it's like a nursery, but it's not based in a school. Yeah, so it might be for I don't know, not even homeschooled, but it's another provision mm. that could be provided mm. in that sense. So maybe home nurseries, as not not ones in the city, but ones that are accessible to uh, parents mm. that can um, utilize that provision as well me and my friend had a really good idea actually and we saw it um Mm. online after we spoke about it and it's mothers that that babysit for mothers okay so say for example me and my friend work opposite days of the week Mm. so on the days that i go into work she does the baby looks after the children and the days that i go she goes to work i look after her children um and i did see for a period of time um mothers that were local to each other were doing things like that you do have to obviously consider the care that's yeah. going into it. So, yeah. you know, how trustworthy is that person? I would trust my children with my friend because I know her very well. But mm. um, if you don't necessarily have that close relationship with the person you're leaving your child with. I know mm. we do that with childcare anyway because we don't have a close say relationship. That, yeah. But it's different when it's in someone's house. It's like that's their environment. Yeah. Whereas when it's in... A building that is verified by Ofsted, you're kind of like, I don't know why that changes things it. Still, things have still happened in nurseries, Lee. Of course seen they have. Things. Of course they have. But then horrifying. You, you have more of a leg to stand on mm. when you are taking your child into this establishment. Yeah. And something happens to your child. If I like when Jayla got the black eye, I sent her to school, and there was ten of you here. And none of you noticed what happened to her eye. Yeah. I have more of a leg to stand on than she was in your home and it was you with these 10 children. <laughs> true, <laughs> Do you true. know what I mean? Yeah. It's a bit more but solid. Even in that instance, because I remember saying to you, phone the school straight away because yes. they could say it was you when you yeah, get exactly. home. So even sending our kids to school, mm. nothing is certain. Mm. It's not guaranteed. Nothing's guaranteed, really. But it's just the fact of just yeah should our employees provide some form of facility to help their help their their employees employees employers to um um, bring bring the youngsters in it does also have to be cost effective for them though as well Mm. because if you think you've got like i think 
I think our hospital has over 24,000 staff. So let's say 50% of those are female, just for argument's yeah. sake, cut it down the middle, 12,000 of those are staff. How many of those are at childbearing age? Let's cut it down the middle again, another 6,000. And then 3,000 of them get pregnant at the same time. Wow. So all of them are bringing their children in. Some may have multiple births. Yeah. And they're all bringing their children in at the same time. Is it cost effective for that place of work to employ the extra staff? Because they're going to have to employ extra staff mm. anyway to look after these children. And then... Are they going to provide food? Do you have to provide food? They have to buy the nappies. You have to, do you know what I mean? So yeah. all of those well, things. You would, you, you would provide those things at nursery though. No. In some cases. No, the nurseries yeah. I've viewed, they use loopy loop. Their own, okay, they have their own cooking yeah. facility. Wow, there's a lot to think about, isn't mm. it? You're just saying that. And I know that um, you're, um, where you are, but they do have a childcare facility, it's don't they? It's ridiculously expensive. It's expensive. Yeah. It's about it's... 1700 a month. Wow. <laughs> What's the point in going to... <laughs> Wow. What's the point in going to work? It doesn't, like, I can't even pay for my travel now. Do you know what I mean? It's that yeah. bad. Wow. So, so the, there are some companies that do have that facility. It's just the fact that can their employ, employers afford to to pay yeah that's the next one and you have to do salary sacrifice where they take so salary sacrifice is when they take the child care costs out first i think Mm. and then what's ever left gets taxed wow well that's yeah which means you're just coming home with nothing basically wow it's, it's just it's a double edged sword. Like if if mum or dad decides to stay at home, then you've only got the one salary anyway. Mm. If mum and dis- dad decide to go into work, you've got to pay for the childcare, so then you've only got one and a third person salary. But then if one decides to stay home and start a business, then you have got two incomes, but one of them is still gonna be hella stressed mm. because they've been at home all day with the children on top of the fact that they've been trying to run a business. And you can't run webinars with kids running around the house like mad, mad people. No. We, we, well, you guys have heard it on the radio, haven't you? <laughs> little kids in the background. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it just doesn't work, does it? You just can't, you can't do it. Yeah, so it's, it's something to, to think about. And I mean, it does say there, we're going to look at some of the countries that do have um, these facilities and they're the highest ranking for family-friendly policies and yeah in, in the, the workplace so mm-hmm. that will be very very interesting to to have a look at so yeah it's something to think about and um as this kumar was it kumar the lady she says that there must uh, there must be brave bold radical thinking about what we as a nation can do to ensure this important sector in society meets the future challenges Obviously, we've seen that there's a lot of um, nurseries that's going to be shutting down. Mm. So how can we as a society meet these challenges, meet these needs? So I don't understand how that's happened, though, because I know um, that a lot of the nurseries were still charging parents even while they were closed. Mm. So if you're still charging parents while you were closed, you never had no children, but you still had an income. It might be for other reasons. might be unsanitary you just never know mm. a lot of these w- nurseries when the officer go in or whoever goes in mm. what conditions they might find things in so it might not just be cost mm. it could be a load of other things mm. that Sad. yeah that don't fit but that's a, a huge what did it say 25 percent mm. of seventy-five thousand. we call it of nurseries are going to be closing and that what, what's going to, to happen to these women. So we'll see y'all in five. Again, the sounds of the Isley Brothers there. Who's that lady? And Lenny Kravitz was the one before then. So Lily, it's yeah. been a really thought, thought-provoking kind of night when it comes to things such as uh, child care mm-hmm. we looked at the um, abductions didn't we of these youngsters going yeah. missing as well as what else the uh, word of the day does anyone remember what the word of the day was 
and the running of the competition too. So I just want to mention um, tonight that there'll be a small, there'll be a programme coming on at Channel 4 at 9 o'clock. Um, it's a brand new business reality show and it's called The Money Maker, Money Maker starring Eric Collins. He's a prime time, um, he's a black businessman and he's hosting this prime time show on Channel 4. And it's really filming during the pandemic. Uh, um, he says filming during the pandemic was a challenge, but he was so pleased with the results. So, um, yeah, so tune tune in. This is a Channel 4 programme called The Money Maker. Um, uh, this is at nine o'clock. And, yeah, it's all about businesses. Uh, it's a business reality show. So that's coming on tonight. Yeah. It was quite um, interesting to see that a lot of people started businesses during the pandemic. I think it's a great time to yeah. start. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I put it a bit late, but we started something. Yeah. 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 Right at the end of the pandemic. <laughs> that's the end of the okay. Pandemic, but, you know. but you started. That's the main thing, right? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, starting business, it's not an easy feat. No, it's not. Yeah, because you've got to raise the capital. Mm. You have to have a good business idea, like that one. Crush people, come on, think outside the box. <laughs> Childcare, um, yeah. So you've got to have the idea, and then it's the the execution of it. So I mean, no one's going to see any results as well uh, until about five years into the business, mm. and it's really is perseverance. Mm. It's it's um, having everything kind of in place to go. Yeah. You know, and that's something that I found. So I think last year um, I was able to do with the Social School of Entrepreneurs, mm. just finding all these really great little uh, initiatives. And there was a challenge, I think, that I sent today. And it was regarding, again, it's a business challenge and you can win prizes. Mm -hmm. So there are different categories. There are yeah. different categories in there. And you can find that it's um, an opportunity, again, for black business owners or entrepreneurs. And you can find this opportunity at msd.uk um, forward slash dot um, msduk.org.uk. And it's called the Innovation Challenge. I'll put it into the chat room. And um, so you can tap into it and... Yeah, it, I mean, there's lots of these great little things out there mm. that can help uh, businesses. Yeah, definitely. And if you are starting a business, well, why not? Why not? I think the there's pandemic is no time is like the time. present, is there? Absolutely. No time like the present. Yeah. I think a lot of people get scared, they think, of all the negatives that can happen from starting a business. Mm -hmm. um, but someone may made the point and I hear it very often you will never know if you don't start absolutely so yeah yeah and we had Livingston on a couple of weeks ago yes. was it last week a couple of weeks ago and even he highlighted that he started his business um during the during last last yeah well the pandemic it was recession recession and here he is 11 years later mm. like helping other businesses to get off the ground mm. so it's not impossible beautiful people when we have a vision it's always about going for that vision and not letting anyone get in the way of it as yeah. well because sometimes we will get those little gremlins coming in, the little yep. negative voices coming in and trying to, and even trying to get support from people as well can be very, yes. very difficult, right? It's very draining. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, um, it's quite sad to come to the acknowledgement that everyone that knows you is not in your corner mm. and it's not because they don't want to be a lot of the time it's just because it's not in them they, that's not their portion yes um and everyone's going to have their opinion everyone's going to have the best advice that they think they can give you but yes you should take on other people's opinions but inevitably your idea is your idea and mm. how you go with your idea is your decision um but support is 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 scarce. It yeah, can be scarce. man, it's 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 shocking. <laughs> what you should be shocked it's about no, it? Really, it's not shocking. It's just a bit um, disconcerting, disheartening, disheartening. Yeah. Because you know you've got a good idea, and you know that 
what you've got to remember know, is that like... you can't you can't kind of rely outside of the box yeah in this instance you're kind of in a box yeah and you can't anything external it's just all external anyway so you just got to focus of uh, someone gave a really good uh, illustration the other day that everything we want or need is inside mm. here inside the vessel here mm-hmm. so outside if you can get help from outside that's great and in business yes you will need to approach different people so on and so forth but if you do as much work as possible inside here mm. and continue pressing forward yeah regardless that's the point the point is just not giving up yeah exactly right so due when, diligence due diligence yeah so mm. when we look at all these great business people because or, or bridges that have been built or because they've all come from someone's imagination yeah and they managed and it's there now it's there okay and someone might have thought, oh, you can't, you can't build the Great Wall of China to keep out the Huns. <laughs> but the Great Wall of China is there, isn't it? Apparently you can see it from the moon. There you go. Okay. With someone's vision. Yeah. I want my design to be seen from the moon. Ugh, yeah, right. You're not going to get seen from the moon. Why? Boom. In your face. In Google Maps. <laughs> just zoom in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yes, just keep it up. Keep up the good work. Okay. So that's a program coming on on Channel 4. About business, businesses, and that's on this evening. It's a business uh, reality show. Mm. A bit like a, you're fired, that guy. Oh, Alan Sugar. Isn't that business reality show? Um, kind of. It's um, an entrepreneur kind of okay. show. People starting up their own thing and giving them his ideas, and he's got to kind of go for it. I've never really been into The Apprentice, to be fair. Mm. I saw this. I saw this. Um, Oh, uh, what's it called? The Dragon's Den. Yes. I saw a snippet from this lady. She does these African crisps, um, mm. African peanuts and African planting chips. Beautiful packaging, mm. great branding, everything on it. And they they said they've never seen a presentation like hers. Wow. But the, the amount that they wanted, like, they were, all of the dragons wanted to invest in her company. Wow. Um, but I think the one on the end, I don't know any of their names, he wanted the most. He wanted something like 30% of the business. And where's the other two down here? They wanted, um, one wanted 10 and two wanted 25 or 20%. Mm. So again, being Even able to, to know that you've got to, yeah, well, when we're going on the stocks and stock market, that's what we're doing. We're buying into someone's business, yeah. someone, into someone's business idea. So One of the guys, they just bought his idea. He was like, I don't want to, I just want to buy your idea and you will just get royalties from it. Yeah. Whenever we made it, and I think up front they must have paid him about a hundred thousand, maybe a bit more. That sounds like not enough. That's not I'm a lot. sure he got paid a lot more than that. Yeah. But then on top of that, um, he was getting like a good couple thousand from yeah. the royalties every every sale. Well, that's not bad. That's not so. Bad. All right, so what is um, Grant Cardone saying in the 10X rule then, as well as to the things that we've possibly spoken about tonight? Grant Cardone says, readily take action. Start. Start, as you mean to go on. Mm. Um, He says, this is entirely... Sorry, I can't see. It's a bit dark. This is entirely what this book is about. Regardless of what that action looks like, these people rarely do nothing even when they are on vacation, just ask their spouses or family. Whether it is by way of getting others to take action for them, getting attention for their products or ideas, or just grinding it out day and night, the successful have been consistently taking high levels of action before anyone ever heard their names. Wow. That we d- and we have not looked in that book, and no. this the, even what we just spoke about was not even <laughs> on the schedule to be talk, spoken about. It's just that that um, what you what you put in there, Pele, that's what inspired us to talk mm. about business. How amazing is that? Mm. That's like confirmation straight away. That is right? that is just my that was my stamp today. I needed a stamp, <laughs> guys. I needed a stamp, mm. and it's that line there. He says. Um, the success will have been consistently taking high levels of action before anyone ever heard their name. And also, can I, can I, that's right. Yeah. Can I mention that they said they've been working day and night. Yeah. 
what song did we, we play can, earlier? We can, we can do, you know. Oh, my days! <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is, this is just like... It's an epiphany. Manifestation happening yes. right here. Manifestation. You just don't understand how sometimes you need that validation mm. because you you know you've been an entrepreneur for as long as i can even remember with your <laughs> singing with your just your whole life has been entrepreneurship so you know what the struggles are when it comes into being an entre- been a, a mom entrepreneur because yes. you've been mom and entrepreneur and now we're just dipping our toes mm. into the ocean that is entrepreneurship and having a business and starting up do you know the great thing is like you said dipping your toe in the ocean yeah now beautiful people if we if we all went to the the ocean and took a cup of cup of water from the the ocean do you know that that it would still be there (laughs) and this is another thing that there is enough for everyone yeah take the competition out there's enough for everybody Mm. Like, you know, we don't have to think, oh, no, I'm not going to share. This is why you said, oh, mum, don't share. I'm not going to share away yeah. because they come, they come. And the thing is, it's just like, yeah, we we, we can't, we've got to be out there and mm. there is enough. There's an abundance of everything. Yeah, okay. and that's one thing he actually says in the book. I just read that chapter. Um, mm. Competitors, that you don't need competition. There's no such thing as competition. Why do we always feel like we have to compete against mm. someone? Mm. You can be in the same place at the same time as someone else with identical ideas, but your ideas are still different. Yeah. How you put it out to someone is going to be different to how they're going to put it out to someone. And who may take yours may take may not take theirs and vice versa so you know this is this is it goes back into line about us um when we were speaking last week about crabs in a barrel not Mm. being the person that drags that crab back down but helps to lift up we have to be there to empower one another you can't just yes we are relying on ourselves to get our businesses up and running because you know, you have to start a race on your own. When mm. you even in, even in a relay, you're the, there has to be the first person to go. Yeah. But inevitably, in the end, it's the team that wins, isn't yes. it? Yes. So, yes, absolutely. Yeah. You see, so it's wonderful. Just starting. He said that as well, didn't he? Mm. Just make a start, and follow that vision. Mm. Follow it through, and help people along the way as well. Mm. How can we help empower and elevate, mm. and rise up help <laughs> everyone else rise up and that's really what we're all about here yeah. on all flavors radios um the music's awesome we have some wonderful djs um catch dj um dj charlie muir from uh seven till nine tomorrow with the general disarray show as well as darnell the therapist from nine until eleven and the well-being show and we also have djs on on thursday i think dj slims on from six till eight as well as uh dj ninja man lloyd from eight till ten and then dj caddy from ten till twelve um yes so please check out the schedule we also have on friday night dj Cryocentric and dj laro um with the late night blues uh, Saturday is Ninja Man Lo- uh, DJ Naiji with a Chaudier show and George Flavors with a, a, a reggae show and then Sunday John J.E. does a gospel John J.E. then we have DJ Laro again with a party this, it's a great kind of calypso everything going on there um, George Flavors from 2 till 4 Mark Philogene from six, 4 till 6 and then from eight till 10, we have DJ Nigy and Ninja Man Lloyd from 10 till 12. Now guys, I forget every week, yes, Lily? I just wanted to say for those of you that entered the competition, thank you for your answers, but they was not correct. So um, we had a submission by Beverly. Hi Bev, who is listening at home. And her answer was there were five and 1961. So Bev got the year, but unfortunately didn't get the number of um, people that were involved in the riders. But Beverly's been listening from the riders. start, hasn't she? Yes. Because I said five initially, didn't I? You did. And then I went and taught, said the, the correct amount. You did. So, oh, we'll think about it. 
We'll think about I'll let you know on Friday, Beth. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I do forget sometimes. So please, if I have not uh, mentioned any of the DJs, you are all very precious to us. You're doing fantab- fantabulous, fantastic job <laughs> on all flavours. And yeah, just keep up the good work, beautiful people. So with that being said, we do hope you've enjoyed the show. And also, beautiful people, give yourselves a nice round of applause. You really support us every single week. And we thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much for choosing all flavours and coming along on this ride with us. And we really do appreciate you very, very much. So following me tonight will be DJ Laro. He'll be on from 8 till 10. And I guess all we have left to say is... We'll We'll see see y'all on on the other other side. side. Take care. See you next week.